With the second slam of the year done and dusted, we've got some interesting movements in the rankings. Both the men and women's ranking was up for grabs. The world number one ranking was up for grabs. On the ladies' side, it stayed the same. But on the men's side, we have a big change. But let's talk about the French Open last week. And let's talk about who won both the French Open last week for the men and women. So on the ladies' side, Iga Sviontek, she goes back to back, taking out Mukova in a very tough match. 6-2, 5-7, 6 going three out of the four years of the French Open now. So well and truly the best clay court player in the world. And Novak Djokovic breaks the record. 23 slams, beating Kasparud in the final. 7-6, 6-3, 7-5. And a big boost in the rankings for Nole. After winning another French Open, let's have a look at the players outside the top 10 that have gone up in the rankings this week. Starting with Mukova. She goes to a career high, number 16 in the world, 27 spots higher than last week. So the final really, really helped her. Jarry, he goes up five spots to a career high, 30 in the world, after having a great clay court season and a great French Open. And Echeverry, he goes up to number 32 in the world, 17 spots higher than last week, also having a great clay court season and finishing with a big clay court result at the French Open. So all those players now who are unseated at the French Open will be seated at Wimbledon at this stage. Players that went down to the rankings after poor results this year at the French. Kudem Matova. She goes down three spots to number 14 in the world. Unfortunately, couldn't replicate her French Open last year by making the quarterfinals. Actually lost in the first round, so she drops down. Marin Cilic. She drops down 43 spots, number 65 in the world after failing to defend the points from last year's French Open semifinal. And of course, Rafa Nadal. He's dropped down 121 spots outside the top 100 now after dropping 2,000 points from last year's triumph at the French Open. So, some Big drops there for some former Grand Slam champions due to their injury troubles. Let's start with the ladies' top 10 for this week. And a few changes, but nothing at the top. With Fiontek defending the French Open and defending her world number one ranking from Sabalenka for now. She stays at number one with Sabalenka at number two, but adding a lot of points, Sabalenka, to her total. So now the gap is only 900 points. Before the French Open, it was actually over 1,000. So Wimbledon could be really interesting. But we have a change in the middle there with Pagula going down two spots to number five, allowing Rabakina and Garcia to go up. And Rabakina now at number three in the world. Career high for her. And it's official. The big three of women's tennis is now completed. But for how long? Because Garcia is at number four, but just a little bit behind. And of course, Pagula at number five. Another change in the middle there with Jabir going up one spot to number six, pushing Goff down to number seven. Goff, of course, last year's finalist lost a lot of points. And Jabir last year lost in the first round, so she gained a lot of points. Zachary stays in there at number eight. But Kazakina, she drops down two spots outside the top 10, making way for Kvitova, who actually didn't play that well at the French Open. She gets a rise up to number nine. And Adaj Meyer, the first Brazilian woman in the open era to make the top 10 by making the semifinals of French Open, goes up four spots into that number 10 spot. And as I said, Kazakina got pushed out. So interesting to see the top 10 going into Wimbledon. And of course, a lot of those names can actually play on the grass. Over to the race of the finals now and some big changes there as well. Nothing at the top though, because Sabalenka stays up there with her semifinal from the French, keeping her on top. But Fiontech, she goes ahead of Rabakina now, adding 2,000 points thanks to winning the French Open. Rabakina dropped down to number three. Bagula stays in at number four. But Mukova, she's gone up 19 spots into that number five spot after the French Open final. So a huge boost for her. And it just shows how good she's been, not just at this tournament, but all year. She's been making big quarterfinals. So finally getting some recognition in the race to the finals. Goff also goes up three spots into that number six spot where Bencic was pushing her down to number seven. Krujikova went down to number eight. Another entry with the Daj Maia going up 13 spots into that number nine spot, pushing down Kvitova down to number 10. And both Kudamatova and Ostapenko get pushed out completely from the top 10 ranking. So... Again, starting to take shape, and with Wimbledon worth points, it's going to be very interesting to see how this looks in about two or three months' time before the US Open Series because there's so many points now up for grabs on the grass. Over to the men's rankings now, and there's a change at the top. Novak Djokovic is back. On top of the rankings, he's gone up two spots higher than last week, up to number three, pushing Alcaraz down to number two and Medvedev down to number three. But that is still a hot competition at the top because, of course, Wimbledon is coming around the corner and no points have been given to Wimbledon. So everything's up for grabs uh, for that number one spot. But Djokovic takes it back after losing it after he lost early in Rome before the French Open. Rude stays at number four because he did replicate what he did last year. Just ahead of City Pass at number five. Runa stays at six, ahead of Rublev at number seven. Fritz still stays at number eight. Sinner at number nine. But Hashinov, after making another run at a slam, this time the quarterfinals of the French Open, he goes ahead of FAA, pushing him out of the top 10 and returning to the top 10 himself. So not too many changes in the middle there for the top 10, but massive change at the top. And again, that number one ranking is still not locked in for Djokovic. We could get a change before Wimbledon if Alcaraz does start to go good on the grass. Having a look over on the race of the finals now, and things again starting to take shape and Djokovic is now on top of the race of the finals after winning the French Open he's now won two slams this year and added a lot of points to his total pushing Medvedev down to number two and Elkris down to number three 
City best stays down at that number four spot, but another change in the middle with Runa making the quarterfinals of the French, going up to number five, pushing Sinner down to number six. Rublev goes down to number seven, and Kasper Rude, he jumps into the top 10. Seven spots higher than last week at number eight, pushing Fritz down to number nine. Hashinov goes down to number 10 in the race to the finals, and Nori gets pushed out of the top 10 completely. So some big changes there in the race to the finals, and Djokovic is only really one Grand Slam away from qualifying for the final. So if he does happen to win Wimbledon, he might actually be the first player to qualify for the ATP finals at the end of the year. So there you have it. A lot to cover with the French Open. Of course, when there's a Grand Slam, there's always massive changes. Uh, the world number one ranking was on the line for both the men and the women, which never happens. And of course, Djokovic takes it back from Alcaraz. Sabalenka's going to have to wait her turn, but who knows? The grass court season might favor her over Sviantec. And maybe at the end of Wimbledon, we get a new number one for the ladies as well. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the most exciting part of the French Open ranking-wise for you? Is it the fact that you know, Rude is now in the top four. He's made three Grand Slam finals, and he legitimately is a top five guy. Is it that Djokovic is back on top after his historic win? Or is it that Sviantec saved her number one spot this week from Sabalenka, who was definitely getting closer and closer? But it's been a hell of a two weeks. Crazy in the rankings as well. And we've got the Wimbledon coming up next.